This right here is what I like to call a Babom. What's a Babom? B-A-B-O-M. Big ass box of mods. And what's it for? The Trans Alp 750. We're finally getting some protection on this. Let's go. Chewy. Let's see what we got here. Handy racks. Yes. These are hand guards. Upper crash bars. Lower crash bars. Side stand foot. Ah, these are the protective plates that go on either side, I'm pretty sure. Headlight guard. And most importantly, skid plate. Well, I was gonna start with the crash bars and the skid plate so I could jack the thing up and get the uh, wheels off and put the new tires on, but apparently there's an adapter I need that I don't have, so we're gonna start with pannier racks instead. So first step on in the pannier rack install is to remove these two pins. What are they? Just kind of plug hole, hole pluggers? Hole pluggers, that's a technical term. And then we are gonna remove these two screws from the passenger footrest and uh, put the racks on. Should be pretty straightforward. I don't like destroying these things. Oh. Pro tip, it unscrews. Alexa, play Three Days Grace. That's why I love running the same pannier racks on all my bikes because I don't have to change my quick release mounts on my giant loop luggage. Awesome! Headlight guard. Be very careful with this well nut because these things suck. That's it for now. I got everything on there I can get on there, except for the hand guards, while I wait for the adapter plates that are preventing me from mounting the crash bars and the skid plate, and therefore the tires, because I can't jack the bike up to take the tires off until I get the skid plate on. Pannier racks, kickstand foot enlarger, and the headlight guard, arguably the three least important mods, are on, although pannier rack's pretty important for camping. We'll continue the rest tomorrow. So, catch up with you then. Okay, so it's been a couple days. We were waiting for these bad boys to arrive. So it turns out you need these adapters if you're mounting the Hepco and Becker crash bars or the tank guard. But the instructions are a little confusing because it says you don't need them if you have one or the other, which kind of makes it sound like you don't need them at all if you have both. It's not the case. It just means that if you have one, you already have it. So you don't need to buy two. We're gonna mount these adapters up and then see about getting the crash bars on. I did a few things in the interim. You can see the fairing is off because I put the heated grips on and I did the hand guards and the hippo hands. I didn't do that on camera because I just got kind of a wild hair one night, but let's put these adapters on. They're actually a little hard to see on the right side because the one radiator hose is in the way, but there's two bolts here on the frame that have to come off. I ended up having to get a breaker bar to get this loose, but they're loose now. I mean, they should be tight. It is literally the frame we're talking about. Okay, it's through. Just gotta get the nuts started on the back. Okay, now these have to be super tight. I'm gonna have to work to torque them. This side is actually a lot easier to get to. They're right here. The hose is not so much in the way and this doesn't have all those extra cables and stuff that are on the other side. So this should be easier. Also, I put it up on the lift because this side's actually in the light now. There it is. All right.
adapters mounted. Now, I think I'm just gonna leave the fairing off at least while I do the bottom crash bars. They actually go into the exact same holes. Can you see how the uppers go over the lowers? So we gotta do it all at once, so I gotta put the fairings back on. Thing is dirty. Yep, here comes the rain. I had to take these off anyway. As you can see, the adapter comes out from behind it, so you have to take the fairing off to get up underneath there, which is why I left them off in the first place, but now we can actually start mounting the crash bars. Okay, well, that's all dry fit. I just gotta put the bolts on the front here. <sighs> Come on, baby. Well, I've hit a pretty major snag and had to take everything back apart. Super fun. So these adapter plates are great, except the bolts that are supposed to go into them don't. So, I don't know. I thought maybe they were directional and I put them in the wrong way. Pulled one off, flipped it over, the bolts still won't go in. So I guess I'm gonna have to go buy a tap and die kit and try to tap this out and make it work because I don't know if it's just that the threads had pain in them. I kind of doubt it at this point, but it's, it's just not going in. So I don't know, the instructions are in German. I don't know what to do, so I'm done for today because I'm about to kick this bike off the stand. <sighs> and no, I'm not a mechanic. This could very well be my fault, but don't know. Okay, fun so far. Okay, it is the next day. I took a well-needed break because I was beyond frustrated. And this morning I went to the store and bought a tap and some new hardware. So I'm thinking there was a manufacturing error or a defect in my particular brackets, the ones that I got. It looks like the threads just weren't cut deep enough. So I'm hopeful this went in pretty easily and we cleaned the threads up. So I'm optimistic that I should be able to get the bolts in now. I only took the one bracket off, thankfully, so I've already reinstalled it. I'm gonna put the fairings back on and we're gonna try to keep going with this crash bar install. Fingers crossed. I feel like I would be remiss in not telling you about the issue that I had, but I'm not convinced it's something that is, uh, that is happening with every single set of these because people have been using them in Europe for a year and feel like if this was a common issue, they'd have fixed it by now. So I think I just got a bad one and I'm hopeful that others will not have the same issue. It went right on very easily. You know, and if the threads had worked, it would have been fine. We'd have been done yesterday, but this is what happens when you work on stuff. Just happy I was able to figure out how to fix it. So let's keep going. Starbuck, stop rolling and stuff. Oh, that's smooth. I got that cleaned up with that tap. Night and day, so different. It's a thousand times better. Okay, now this is how it's supposed to work. <laughs> okay, sweet. And all I have to do is go around and tighten everything up. I'm gonna finally put that damn skid plate on. Okay, crisis averted. I just ran a tap through the bracket and everything is mounted solidly, we're good. I do like how these black bars just kind of fade into the look of the bike. They're not super obnoxious, obtrusive. You guys know I had those white bars on my Norden and you could definitely see them. So it's nice to go with something a little more low key. So onto the main event, the skid plate. This is what we've all been waiting for because I want to get it on there and see how much clearance I lose. You can't run this skid plate without the crash bars because it bolts directly to them. So hopefully this is a more straightforward install and we could just keep rolling. Ho oh, ho ho! Started it blind. Look at that. Nailed it, bro. Alright, let's get this other one lined up like that. Okay. Let's go in there. Don't give me any trouble now. Unfortunately, I have to undo the bolts I already put here to put this bracket on. I knew there was going to be some overlap like that. I tried to look ahead at least with the crash bars and the engine guard, but missed that one. Well, I needed to redo this Loctite anyway, so... It's a blessing, I guess. What a crazy random happenstance. You may be wondering why I'm only showing you one side. Well, one, it's usually about the same on both sides, and two, the lighting's way worse up there, so. And plus, like, do you need to see the same thing twice? Probably not. You get the idea, I assume. <laughs> Look, I'm tightening bolts, but the bracket is similar on that side. The bracket's not right where it's supposed to be. It's not gonna start. It was good, but 
Also not good because I haven't tightened the side things down because I don't know exactly where it goes. Start with that. I do like that the holes are a little wider than you actually need. That gives you a little wiggle room. That's always good. I'm not lock tightening this yet because I'm just wanting to get it holding it up for the moment. There we go, buddy. Come on, baby. Where are we going with this exactly? So I added zip ties to hold it up while I was lining everything up. It worked great. So 10 of 10, you recommend zip ties. Also, if I could not take this out, that would be great. I'd rather not reset it if I can avoid it. But now that everything's started, I'm gonna tighten stuff up. Let's start with the most difficult bolts and work my way to the easiest. Now, I only have to change the oil on this thing once a year or so, so. I can lock tight these and feel good about it. I haven't tightened down the bracket yet because I want it to be able to flex and move as I'm doing this. The funny part about using zip ties to secure this is there's actually a couple of basically industrial zip ties that help hold it on. That's the last part that goes on. Huh, I probably should have put that on before I tightened everything down. But it didn't say to. Pretty tight though. I'm gonna need some pliers to get this started. I kind of hate this. Okay, well, I got it started. A pair of ice grips. Now I just need to tighten it and we're good. It'll make a lot more sense for this to be the other way. Yeah, I think it goes the other way. I think this lied to me. The picture is very deceiving. Okay, cut all that out, stupid. But look at this picture. That looks like it's coming in from the inside. Or, but no, it's coming in from the outside because this looks very wrong. And these are the mistakes you make when you're an idiot. Not a mechanic, said it a thousand times. Don't even know why you're watching this. I guess it's like watching Dorf try to play golf, you know? Yeah, this makes a lot more sense. Also a lot easier to start this way. But that's way less ugly and matches everything else. It makes a lot more sense. It's also easier to tighten. Very popular question on my video about ground clearance was, yeah, but how much ground clearance do you lose with the skid plate? Well, uh, it looks like it's pretty close to the bottom of that exhaust. And remember we had about eight inches to the lowest point. It's supposed to be 8.3, but whatever. So right here to the edge of the skid plate, seven and a half inches. Yeah, seven and a half. Under here, it's about seven and a half. Bike is lean slightly to the right. Looks like seven and a half inches. It is literally just like two millimeters below the bottom of the exhaust here. So yes, you're losing some ground clearance, but I've been told that seven and a half inches is more than impressive. So whatever. So it's not like the biggest ground clearance ever, but I would rather have less ground clearance and have this skid plate knowing that I'm just gonna bang across this piece of steel than have no skid plate and every time I hear a noise be super puckered, so. Well, I'm so in love with this lift, I'm now doing stupid things like trying to change the rear tire while the bike is still up here. Let's see if this even works. At least I have to get the tire off if I put this lift in the right place. It's a 27 millimeter. On the back, I should have cracked this before I jacked it up, but I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Uh, they're always super crazy tight from the factory, which I don't like because I have to be able to get this off on the side of the trail. So that's like 80 foot pounds or something usually. I don't usually go back up to that. <clears throat> Just be careful when you do this. It's really easy to come off and hurt yourself. It's at least single sided, so there's only one side to loosen. Here we go. This should be good. Yep. And I like to just set everything in the order it came off right here next to it. So that no confusion when it comes time to put it back on. Matic, they don't usually come grease. Nope. We don't want it corroding. Yeah. That height's pretty perfect. Spacer. I just like to put that back on the axle so I can find it. Should be one on the other side. Well, yeah, that was shockingly easy. Now comes the hard part. Ha! Okay. Oh! Hey, hey! I'll take it. Wind it around if we need to. Once the tube is in. Okay. Well, after considerable swearing, off camera, of course, the rear tire is on. Chains on, good. Interesting technique, moron.
This one's greased. That's good. That's good. Real good. Dude, I had you. I accidentally put both sides on there. I mean, pretty easy to tell which is which. <laughs> yeah, yeah, baby. I'll put a little, little knobby on that just to keep that from disappearing back into the tire. No tube for you. No tube for you. Nope. Absolutely not, pal. Come on, you son of a bitch. Ah! Ah! Suck it, bro. The front is a hundred times easier. Oh my god. Still heavier. It's nice when the spacers are greased because you can tell which way it goes in because it's the part that's all nasty greasy. Okay, and we get the calipers lined up. One. Oh yeah, that's what we like to see. Nice and greasy, nice and easy. Okay, I just snugged up the axle bolt because we are going to lower the bike, pump the forks to make sure that they're straight and then we'll do the pinch bolts on the axle. That was fast and easy. Okay, make sure the forks are straight. And yeah, there are torque specs for these, but I just like to go hand tight because I might have to take this off in the middle of the desert or something. And I want to know that I can get it off. Just check them once in a while, if you're worried about it. That is the bolt I've been looking for all day. The last bolt as a nut, but we'll take it. So honestly, Time consuming, because we did a lot here, but uh, just aside from the one pretty major mishap, which was actually pretty easily rectified, everything went smoothly. Awesome, so I just want to thank uh, the sponsors that have worked with me on this build, Moto Machines, who sent me all the Hepco and Becker stuff. Pop over to motormachines.com, check out, they have a ton of Transalp stuff, and what's nice is all there is this Hepco and Becker, it's European, so it's all been tested for a year, it's not like brand new prototype stuff, because the bike's been out for an extra year in Europe, and Hepco and Becker is a German company. I've actually bought these Oxford grips on Amazon myself, so the sponsor for that one is me. Rocky Mountain sent me the mirrors, thank you Rocky Mountain, and uh, of course Dunlop for the tires that I've been dying to try out, you guys have asked about these Trail Max raids, and I've been curious about them too, so excited to get that all going, rolling. Oh, and Quadlock sent me a new phone case and a new mount, because I've been working with them forever, my favorite mounts by far. So, we'll do a full kind of walkthrough of the build. This was just sort of a mods process video. The full walkthrough will come once it's done. I got a tail tidy coming from 3D Cycle Parts and a few other things, so. Not quite done, but it's pretty functional. It's time to get out and actually ride this damn thing. Unfortunately, all the places I wanted to take it are under the snow right now, but we'll find something. So if you want to support the channel or you're picking up mods for your trans up or whatever, please feel free to use the affiliate links. Uh, I'll put links to everything that's on the bike in the description. I'll also just put links to Rocky Mountain, obviously, Amazon, Revzilla, Giant Loop, Moto Camp Nerd. So if you're picking up your gear there, you want to support the channel by clicking on my link first. I super appreciate it. That's how I put food in the mouth of my obnoxious dog that will not stop barking while I'm trying to film, thereby ruining the livelihood that provides for her. Anyway, I'm tired. I'm done for today. So thank you for watching. I appreciate you and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. I uh, thank you.